Which one of these videos is AI generated? If you said the one on the right, congratulations, you're correct. But you would also be correct if you said the one on the left, because both of these videos were made by AI. And ever since VO2 was released on December 16th, I've been asking myself, am I replaceable? Were the years I've spent learning Blender and videography a massive waste of time? And I'm not alone. It's estimated that 300 million jobs could be replaced by AI in the next five years. So as 3D artists, what AI should we be worried about? Well, there are three main types of AI, each with unique dangers and benefits. I'm sure you're familiar with type one. These are video and image generation AI, the best of which can produce images that look like this and videos that look surprisingly realistic. For video, Google's VO2 is the best right now with Sora as a distant second. Image generation is a closer race with Dolly 3 and Mid Journey both able to produce convincing results. In their current form, these prompt-based AI have already replaced many artists, specifically by taking away smaller clients. I mean, you're not gonna see VO2 in the next Dune movie. They may use AI tools, but they're not going to use fully AI generated imagery. I'm sure they would if they could get away with it, but AI shots aren't consistently realistic. And so many people would boycott the movie that I don't think we'll see fully AI generated imagery in blockbusters anytime soon. But for many smaller companies, that's not the case. Just put yourself in the shoes of a business owner. If you're trying to get some new content for your new website or ad campaign, are you going to choose the option that is virtually free, has a turnaround time of minutes, and gets you 80% realism? or spend thousands working with videographers, 3D artists, and web designers for weeks on end to get to that 100% mark. It's a tough decision, especially if those extra savings could go into a larger advertising budget or grow your business. I mean, I can see the dilemma. So AI-generated imagery is dangerous right now, and there's no telling where it will go in future. But type 2 AI is both more dangerous and more useful for artists. These are AI tools. They don't generate entire videos themselves. Instead, they help with certain parts of production. This can be extremely beneficial, but it's also dangerous. So what are some of the most powerful AI tools? Well, first is Blend AI. This is a prime example of how AI can be helpful for creatives. Blend AI is an add-on that essentially gives you an AI personal assistant for how to execute technical tasks inside of Blender. It has some other features as well, and this is an all-around awesome application of AI. But next is something far more dangerous. 3dfy.ai is a platform that allows you to create 3D models based on a prompt. Now right now, there is nothing to worry about. This was a feature that was implemented into many Autodesk programs about a year ago now, and no one uses it. The models it creates are sloppy and they need a ton of work to retopologize. So why is it on this list? Well, this demonstrates the fundamental philosophy that the industry cares about three things. It cares about results, time, and money. AI is already fast and cheap. So once it gets to the point where it can deliver good results as well by creating models of good topology, that's going to take away a lot of jobs. This trend is continued with the next AI, Blender GPT. This is another add-on for Blender, and it has some use cases, but unlike Blend AI, it's far more dangerous than it is useful. Essentially, Blender GPT allows you to type a prompt, and it will take that prompt and write a Python script that will then add whatever you ask it to create as 3D objects in your scene. So why is Type 2 AI? so much more dangerous than type one. So first, why is AI dangerous in the first place at all? Well, specifically for creatives, it's dangerous because it can replace you, take your job. That's only going to happen if it's widely adopted. Now we talked about why many large studios won't use fully generated AI images because of the results, but also because of public opinion. AI tools don't have the same stigma as fully generated AI shots. And they also yield better results because they aren't replacing the entire studio. Instead, they're replacing the modeling team or the animation department. And as AI continues to get better, we may see artistic integrity disappear. As artists are forced to either use AI to meet insane deadlines or they're laid off. And that's a scary future. And there's one AI that hasn't been released yet that could bring that future into reality. And that's Meta's XR project. This is an attempt to create fully immersive virtual and augmented reality worlds 
that are entirely powered by AI. They're going to be doing this to implement this technology into their VR headsets in the metaverse, but also into their new AR glasses as that technology continues to develop. However, the problems that need to be solved to create immersive virtual worlds are the same problems that are preventing AI from taking over the film industry. Things like realistic model and texture generation, powerful AI-driven animation, and increased render performance to be able to work in real time. Meta is planning on launching this in early 2026, but that doesn't mean that there are going to be huge layoffs right away. But slowly, AI will take over many of the tasks that were once performed by artists, and that's where Type 3 AI comes in. Type 3 is the most dangerous AI but it's not here yet. OpenAI announced their plan for AI agents, and its intended release date is this month, January 2025. So what is an AI agent? How could it be helpful? And why is it so dangerous? The whole idea of an AI agent, also known as an operator, is that you have your own personal AI that's living on your computer and can do basically everything you can. It can work with text, code, images, videos, and you essentially just have to say, book me a dinner reservation send out an email to my coworkers, or start a project file in Blender. Because agents live on your computer, they have access to your programs and can essentially do anything you can. But that is the ultimate vision. Right now, we don't have AI agents, but there are two that are coming soon that are gonna be complete game changers. First is AI's multimodal agent that is due to release this month. It won't be able to open other programs like Blender, but it's optimized for problem solving and artistic creation through its own system. But this is the first iteration, the first generation of AI agents. So in future releases, they're only going to get better. Next is ServiceNow's AI, which is focused on integration with other platforms and then utilizing the integration for workflow automation. They're essentially trying to bridge the gap between consumers and corporations by replacing customer service teams and sales staff with AI agents. And this integration tech is becoming more and more powerful. Just think about these agents. They work for you uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and you don't have to pay them or take care of them. And in our case, they can run your IT department, your customer experience, your employee experience. ServiceNow has partnered with NVIDIA, IBM, and Microsoft to create an even more powerful integration system. Bill McDermott described ServiceNow as the control tower that integrates other AI systems. This means as the integration network and agent technology continues to develop, this will become even more revolutionary, but also more dangerous. So what jobs specifically are in danger? And how do you protect yourself? Well, there are three visual effects positions that are most at risk. We'll start with the least and go to the most in danger. First are texture artists. Texture work requires a lot of tedious technical knowledge like UV editing that is on track to be replaced by AI. Now, texturing is also largely creative with many artistic choices leading to the final result which is why it's not going to be entirely replaced. Second are compositors. We've already seen After Effects Roto Brush that utilizes AI to rotoscope more effectively, and Adobe's Fast Fill project, which is better at paint outs than many artists. But as these tools continue to improve, demand for talented compositors will decrease significantly. Now, I'm not trying to sensationalize this, there's still going to be a need for compositors. But even if demand drops 20%, that's still a huge blow. Third is concept artists. This is a field that has already been encroached on by Dolly 3, VO2, and other AI models. But as they continue to improve, the need for a human concept artist or previs tech drops. Because in previs, you don't need really high quality or realistic results. You're just trying to block out the main story and animation. Finally, Blender itself is planning on adding AI tools. So if you care about that, you can watch this video here.